Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now with this generation of CPUs, Intel have introduced another integrated graphics solution, this time called UHD 710. Found inside the Celeron G6900 and Pentium G7400, the UHD 710 iGPU features a slightly lower dynamic frequency and less execution units than the 730 graphics found inside the 12th Gen i3s. Your first thought given the name might be how do these onboard graphics compare to NVIDIA's GT710? That was certainly my first question. The last 710 I tested was a 2GB GDDR5 model and from what I found from my testing today, Intel's UHD graphics will sometimes do better, particularly in games that aren't CPU limited. For example, Red Dead and Skyrim will run better on the Pentium G7400 and UHD graphics than they would with the GT710 and a more powerful CPU. Fortnite, however, one example of what could potentially be part of a long list of games, will struggle because of the limitation imposed by the two-core Pentium. So if you paired the GT710 with the G7400, the results would be similar to that of the integrated UHD graphics. But if you were to use, say, a six-core i5 with the GT710 from NVIDIA, then that combo would come out on top because of the additional CPU power. Whether the UHD or GT comes out on top overall depends on where the bottleneck lies. Let's move on to a few more independent UHD 710 tests, continuing with the better bet, the Pentium. The Celeron, on the other hand, will struggle too much as far as the CPU side of things go. The first game I tested then was GTA 5, which at 720p ran fine. It ran with a close to 60fps average, which is odd because the first time I fired it up it ran with about 10 frames less, and felt pretty difficult to control. A quick reboot of both the game and the system seemed to fix any of the problems I had during the first run, so I can happily say that despite not looking brilliant, GTA can be enjoyed. In CSGO we got a nice average, almost 100 FPS, though this was let down by the expectedly bad frame times. There wasn't really any lag, it was more of a consistent stutter. The game ran smoothly for a few seconds at a time and then we'd get a sudden dip that would last less than half a second. It's the usual sort of micro stutter that we've seen before. It wasn't totally unplayable by any means, just more of an inconvenience, especially in a competitive environment. Back in Fortnite now because the performance mode can help with the frame rate issues. The CPU itself is still problematic, but this less intensive rendering option does make the game more low end friendly overall, and it means that we can average closer to 60 FPS, albeit without eliminating those pesky dips and drops. Still, this is better than playing at the regular low settings from a competitive standpoint. Somehow we managed to squeeze 30 FPS out of Forza. These integrated graphics would definitely do better inside a 4-core chip, but it is what it is. If you want to play Forza Horizon 5 with an integrated GPU like this, then by some miracle you can do so. Multi-competitor races will probably fare a lot worse than just driving around though. Still, I'm happy to see that Intel's iGPUs have really progressed in recent years, even at the lower end. I still find it difficult to recommend the Pentium, but if where you live it's significantly cheaper than an i3, and you don't want to pair it with anything more powerful than a 1050 Ti, it might be worth thinking about. Consider less expensive, higher core count chips from older generations as well though. Finally I decided to punish myself and upset my eyeballs with Cyberpunk. To get this running smoothly, you're going to need, well, more powerful hardware for a start, let's face it, but enabling FSR can at least get us close to 30 FPS, though I must say it becomes pretty difficult to see with the ultra performance FSR mode. Overall, the UHD 710 graphics aren't as bad as I thought, but they're certainly best suited to your older games collection. If you're saving up for a graphics card to pair with your Pentium or Celeron, this iGPU solution can be used in the meantime, providing the power of the CPU doesn't limit your gaming experience first. Thank you for watching then, this has been a quick look at the UHD 710 graphics found on Intel's newest and cheapest 12th gen CPUs. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.